Hello everyone, and we are continuing our study in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 15 through 23. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. Now this is where I love resources like Mounts, M-O-U-N-C-E, um, and the Amplified Bible, because they bring these passages out in such a way as to clarify what God is really trying to teach us here. The word for sin here is hamartano, um, which is, comes in various forms in the New Testament, um, various conjugations of that word. Um, it's used in one form or another for the word sin. Now, it is true that this literally means to miss the mark, but I like what theologian Erickson Millard uh, stated when he says, well, that to miss the mark is not because of some inerrant uh, mistake that a person has made. Uh, the culpability of sin lies within the heart of the person uh, because they are aiming for the wrong things and that is how they miss the mark. Um, so sometimes uh, people state the definition of this Greek word in such a way as it's um, you know something a person just kind of happened to do. Um, but um, he brings out, Mr. Millard, uh, the, the full meaning and the connotation of the word is that um, uh, you missed the mark because you were aiming and focusing on the wrong thing. And, and that's uh, basically true of sin. Uh, whenever we sin, it's usually because we are focused on the wrong thing uh, and not Jesus Christ. So uh, that's an awesome interpretation because we can see from this chapter that Paul in no way excuses sin. The word here for servants is slave, a person that submits themselves to the will of another. Uh, and that's what we have to do as servants of Christ. Uh, I'm going to read it to you uh, the way Mounts, um, verse 16 anyway, uh, the way Mounts interpreted it. Um, he, he just takes the actual Greek and uh, fills in the, the English words. Um, he doesn't um, try and uh, t take an interpretation of it. He just fills in the actual English word. So here goes. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. Now that's crystal clear. But God be thanked, this is verse 17, that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Verse 18, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. So Paul is saying here, he's really thanking God in these two verses that we were, and he uses the past tense, we were slaves to sin. Uh, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you or it's delivered to you. Uh, he puts this in a past tense because as Christians, we should no longer be slaves to sin. Um, and everyone has the uh, possibility of sinning. Uh, we are uh, weak and uh, we need God's help to stay uh, free from those things that once had us bound. Um, but in no way 
should we as Christians be slaves to sin uh, if we are something is drastically wrong uh, because the scripture teaches us repentance brings a certain fruit and so it shouldn't be that sin is taking us over uh, and, and we're under uh, some kind of uh, just slavery uh, to wrongdoing uh, we should be able to say no to the devil we should have the power to say no and so um, he says this in the past tense uh, and so verse 18 says being then made free from sin ye became the servants of righteousness now when Paul says free from sin uh, he is talking about willful sin he is talking about I once was um, a smoker or a drug addict or whatever and and now uh, Christ has set me free from the bondage of sin, bondage of willful sin. So I should no longer, these scriptures make clear, I should no longer be under bondage to sin. And certainly that was my experience uh, too. Uh, and when I came to Christ, there I had the bad case of the couldn't help it. Uh, there were a lot of things it seemed like I just couldn't help doing uh, until I gave my life to Christ. And so I certainly, uh, from experience, understand this scripture about being made free from sin. Verse 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants of righteousness unto holiness. Verse 20, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Verse 21, what fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. So in this verse 19, uh, Paul says, I speak after uh, the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Uh, he is simply saying, I'm speaking to you in human terms, something that you can understand and we know in ancient times slavery was something everyone would have understood the relationship between the slave and the master the level of subjection that was there so when he says the infirmity of the flesh he's saying because we are finite and human I'm trying to uh, relate to you on human terms um, he also says and uh, I just want to bring out um, he says righteousness, he uses the phrase righteousness unto holiness. And the word holiness here is uh, the Greek word hagiasmos, which literally means sanctification, uh, which is to set apart yourself to God uh, for God's service. And so um, Paul uses a word here uh, in in my understanding of scripture uh, sanctification I certainly teach is synonymous uh, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the, of the Holy Spirit that they are one and the same you set itself aside your life you consecrate your life to God uh, which leads to the infilling of the Spirit of God now verse 21 uh, there's a phrase I want to bring out here he says the end of those things is death. Uh, that is Greek word thanatanos. And death has to do with spiritual separation. Uh, we know it can mean natural or it can mean spiritual when the scripture talks about death. So here we are talking about spiritual things. So every man dies naturally. So we are left to, with the with the thought that the spiritual is our actions toward sin that causes the spiritual separation between us and God. Verses 22 through 23. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life for the wages of sin is death 
but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So here again is that phrase made free from sin and God means just what he says. Uh, when we get saved we're free from sin. We are free from the bondage of sin. Uh, we become slaves to God and a slave doesn't keep stepping outside of the servitude of his master. So we have our fruit, the scripture says, unto holiness. So our fruit, what we should be exhibiting in our life is holy living. When you look at a tree, uh, the tree it shows what kind of fruit, what kind of tree that is. You see apples on an apple tree, oranges on an orange tree. That lets you know what type of fruit. And so when we're Christians, we should be exhibiting the fruit of holiness and the fruit of salvation in our life. So verse 23 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for joining us today at Living Waters Bible Study. Don't forget, read your Bible and pray every day and you will grow. If you have any questions, you can email me at grsem7 at gmail.com. God bless you is my prayer.